Dice Tower Tonight, episode 91. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies! Stop! Welcome to Dice Tower Tonight, a video cast about board games and card games, and especially the people who play them. On tonight's show, we celebrate St. Patrick's Day with a discussion of Press Your Luck of the Irish Games. A dubious connection to be sure, but we're going to see how far we can go with it. Also, Crystal is on deck with a game for me and the chat to play and is being very mysterious about it. We run through some titles we've played lately and we answer questions from the audience live. I'm Eric Summerer, and joining me now, the Elizabeth Banks to my Peter to Markin, it's Crystal Dax. Okay, so you have done this one before, I remember, I think. Yes, and, and the question is, did you know who it was then? I did not, yeah. I think. And then I was mad at myself for not knowing, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Although that happens more often than not, is like you make a reference and I the names just don't strike my brain immediately. Sure. So I mean, you know, Peter Tamarkin, you don't hear that name very often. Elizabeth Banks, you know, she's in all sorts of movies and stuff. But right. it's, it's a harder connection to make. So anyway, how's it going, Crystal? It's going pretty well. How are you? Happy St. Patrick's Day. Yes, happy St. Patrick's Day indeed. Uh, my my son, my youngest, when I, you know, said it was St. Patrick's Day, he was on his way to school, he didn't want to wear green, and then he sort of um, decided maybe he did, so he picked a green, the greenest mask he could for going to school <laughs> this morning. It's like, okay, okay, we have this, a new method of dressing up um, with, with the masks. I have definitely made some fashion statements with some of the masks that I've purchased throughout the past year. Because really, why not? Like, sure. Do you have I, any of the ones that, that have a face on it? A, a couple of the no. ones that my son has make him look like Simba or, you know, other cartoon characters and stuff. And it's kind of cute. See, okay, so those are cute. But I'm like, when I'm, I, I've seen the ones that are like terrifying. They're like horror or like clown. Like, I don't okay, know. Okay, yeah, no, I don't no, want no. That. I don't no. want those. But Simba, Simba's adorable. Okay. I like I could get down with that. Like, can you make my snout look like a unicorn snout? Like, I guess that would just be a horse, though. That's probably not that good. I'd have sure. to have unicorn horn. Otherwise it wouldn't work. And then it just becomes a whole thing and you got yeah. get... then you're wearing a onesie and a mask and a horn, and it's just <laughs> I mean it's... I mean, hey, who knows? The Dice Tower cruise next year, maybe we'll all be in onesies and masks together, maybe. you know? <laughs> maybe. You never know. All right. Well, we're we're going to be talking about some press your luck games coming up uh, later in the show. Uh, but but we should probably talk about some games we've been playing lately. Crystal, you said you had one you've been playing digitally recently. Yes, and I actually uh, have figured out a way to show it off. So I'm going to uh, move my video over. So I actually played. This is a photo of the real game on a table that I did not take. Um, this is actually from a user on Board Game Geek who I'm going to credit. Um, uh, Judoka on Board Game Geek uploaded this photo um, of Paris Connection, which is a cube rails game. Um, I've played a couple different cube rail games, um, but I had never played Paris Connection until recently. It is in beta right now on Board Game Arena. So uh, in Paris Connection, it's a really simple game. There are trains of a bunch of different colors and um, all the players on their turn can do one of two things. They will have, they start with a couple of trains in their supply at random. And you can either turn in one train for any two trains of another color, or you can lay track, meaning you take up to five trains of a specific color and lay them out onto the board. Um, you are ideally looking to make the routes valuable for trains that you have in your possession and make the routes not uh, optimal or favorable for people for the other uh, train colors. Uh, at the end of the game, a given train color will score based on how many cities its route reached and you will multiply the number of city points reached. Some of the cities are worth more than one point, but you'll multiply that number times the number of trains in your possession of that color. But what's interesting is the supply of trains is limited for every single color. So when you lay track, you are taking away from the pool of trains of that color, meaning you and the other players will have less of those trains that you can pick up and hold on to. So by making the route better, you, will be able, you won't be able to grab as many of a specific color. Um, it's incredibly simple mechanically. 
Um, as you can see in that top left corner there, there is literally a little track that goes along. Um, and as trains reach cities, you move that train color up the track to show how much that train is worth. And at the uh, once, I think all of the colors, but one or two have been depleted completely, meaning they are either on the board or in people's uh, possession, uh, then you just score. And that's it. It's incredibly simple, um, but really fun. And it's neat because toward the end, you might be hoarding trains of a specific color, um, but you'll have to make, when it's your turn, if you don't want to lay track, you might want to turn in one of those trains. So you're kind of trying to do a little bit of manipulation with which ones you pick up, which ones you put down, and then you can also build routes suboptimally. Uh, in this picture specifically, you can see like that uh, it looks like the yellow, well, the yellow is pretty good, but you could literally cluster the trains up kind of however you want, as long as they're connected to another train of that color. So if you don't have any blue in your possession, you could just lay track on no, on not, on not on two cities to yeah. make blue not worth as much. And then once those trains are out, they're gone. So uh, this one, like I said, it is in beta on Board Game Arena right now. Um, the implementation we played seemed to work pretty good. Um, we didn't run into any, I don't think, major glitches um, on BGA. Obviously, anything in beta, you know, kind of a risk because they're still working on the programming for it. But right. I had a lot of fun with this one. Have you played Paris Connection, Eric? I haven't played Paris Connection. Um, it it seems nice and simple. Uh, it seems like something I would enjoy. Maybe a little bit of a uh, Transamerica vibe with with actual ownership of different lines and stuff. It's it's one I should uh, I should try out on BGA. Yeah, I think this would be like if you if people like Transamerica, then this is a nice it's a similar weight, but maybe a, a little bit different strategy wise. Um, I like Transamerica and I really like Paris Connection. So very cool. Yeah. Uh, while we're talking about Board Game Arena, we should mention that there is a, a Dice Tower group uh, that has started up recently based on uh, some discussions in the Board Game Geek a guild discussion and we started a group and sort of made it open so that fans of of the dice tower can come and play games there uh, i've been jumping in on a few learning games of raise arcana recently but i'm i'm up for learning all sorts of stuff maybe a game of paris connection um uh, and, and in fact, a couple of regulars that, that I've seen come by on the chat here at uh, Dice Tower tonight, I'm playing some games on uh, Board Game Arena, which is pretty cool. Uh, so I'm hoping to do more of that in the near future. And I do want to say that I did get a, sec a second play of Kalis in on Board Game Arena. So like I, I said, I was completely enamored after the first play. Yep. And, you know, sometimes you you get that feeling and you're like, okay, but really, do I like it as much as I think I do? And so I played it a second time with three players instead of two. I still love it wholeheartedly and want to, like, when I'm scrolling through BGA, <laughs> I honestly get happy when I see Kalis in there. And it it's like... I, I don't know who I am anymore. Also, Eric, the thing that I warned you about yes. is happening right now. I <laughs> just saw it. The, so, you've got, so you've got your blinds shut. You, you've moved your desk and you're near yes, a window. Yes, my desk is in a new part of the office and the blinds right ahead of me. The sun is coming directly through them. <laughs> and so I have just, a little line of sunlight. It's it's like, it's a disco. It's a, like a disco ball that has... Stuff. I'll just, I'll just uh, hang out over there here you go. For, a, for a little while. <laughs> Excellent. I, I'm glad I warned you, because otherwise you'd be like, what's on your face? It, it adds uh, extra ambiance to the room. It's, it's fun. Yeah, yeah <laughs> for sure. Uh, so the game I would like to talk about, I'm kind of excited about. I rarely get to, uh, to play the new hotness. Um, it, it's, it just doesn't happen as often as it, as it used to. Um, but I have in my hands... The Whoa. new Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition. This is the Terraforming Mars card game. Um, I did not realize the box was this big. Yeah, that's This is huge. a pretty good-sized box. So uh, a lot of people, I think, have been um, playing and showing off a prototype um, that was floating around for a while. And But this is the actual production version of the game. Um, it's one of the, the early copies. And um, it was very kind of Stronghold to send it along for me to check out. I have so far only played this solo because I, I can't really play this with my kids. It's a little too complicated. My 13-year-old could probably handle it if he was in for it. Um, but as far as my 9-year-old is concerned, it's probably too much. Um, I don't recall, Crystal, if you are a Terraforming Mars fan of the, of the base game. 
I have never played Terraforming okay. Mars, which admittedly, like, it's not that I've avoided it. I just haven't gotten around to it. But it was really, really fun uh, on the Dice Tower cruise when we were doing a live show and I was up on stage and had the microphone. I don't remember what prompted it, but I was able to mention to Stephen Bonacore on the microphone that I'd never played Terraforming Mars. <laughs> just to, like, to, like... Just twist the knife a little bit. You know, it's oh. Bonacore, so that was a fun moment. But I, I will play it at some point. I just don't know when. <laughs> so, uh, from a design perspective, this does have Jacob Frixelius's name on the top. Uh, he's the designer of Terraforming Mars, the board game, but also co-design with Nick Little and Sydney Engelstein, um, which is pretty cool. Terraforming Mars, the card game, the Ares Expedition, uh, I think is a good entry point for you to uh, to join the system, Crystal, because okay. it's basically a combination of Terraforming Mars and a lot of the systems from that game, and Race for the Galaxy. Oh yeah! Now you're talking. You're, you're you know you're speaking my language now. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there is still a board in the card game. It's a it's a small board. Um, and in fact, whereas Terraforming Mars has um this this sort of positional aspect, uh, you're claiming spaces on on the big board in Terraforming Mars. You're not doing that in the card game. The, this is more much more of a tracker. Uh, there are some ocean tiles that go on here, but y you will flip them over and get a reward. And you don't own them. You don't own any of the spaces on Mars. You are still, however, trying to terraform Mars. You're, you're trying to uh, flip all of the ocean tiles to get water, liquid water, on the planet. You're trying to raise the oxygen level over here on the side. You're trying to raise the temperature of the planet to a certain level. And um, you are also... Is that it? That's all three. Yes, the, the water tiles, the oxygen, and the temperature. Um... A lot of that is more abstracted now. Uh, you're given a a little plant tile to, to as a <laughs> reward when you you have increased the oxygen level. You are still just like the base game, given a corporation at the beginning, um, like this arc light uh, corporation that that gives you starting money, and so it's this um, asymmetric starting system. So you might be arc light, but I might be foblog. And you start with different amounts of money and different abilities as you uh, trigger different powers, just like the big game, the big brother. Um, so you're given one of those, and you will be given a whole bunch of cards. Let me grab a few here. Um, that look very much like the cards in Terraforming Mars. Uh, they have a cost. They have lots of symbols along the side that get used for scoring and all sorts of stuff. They'll And then different effects that might produce more cash. Um, that might allow you actions that you can perform to trade one thing for another thing, to raise the temperature level, flip oxygen tiles, all of that stuff. Um, and there are the the green production cards. There's the blue... Come on, blue. Where are you? Um, the blue, generally, action cards. And there are the red event cards that are much more expensive, but do things far more dramatically as a one-time effect. So you're sort of building your tableau, just like the Big Brother, uh, and your abilities to, to make stuff happen. Now, what makes it different, as I put these back... Oh, one thing while I have the card out. Go away. Um, the art. People complained about the art in Terraforming Mars. Um, I really like the art design on, on the new system. I mean, it just it's a lot... Let's see if I can get it to actually focus on the art. Come on now focus camera um it's it's just stronger it's it's deeper it's less clip arty um it, it it feels like a stronger aesthetic feel to the whole thing which is which is nice a nice upgrade um also speaking of upgrades the pieces are better a lot of complaints about the terraforming mars cubes these are a more sort of textured plastic, uh, a little more solid. It comes with a couple of these organizers, so you can put these in different portions of the table uh, and, and easily... You're doing a lot of exchanging of these. These little markers get used all the time in the game. Um, so it's good to have them spread out and organized a little better. You have this nice double layer organization board. It's hard to, to see in the picture, but... These are they, re recessed that was like, wells. That's the biggest thing that everybody complained about with Terraforming Mars originally, yes. right? Like that you could just 
wa- wipe your whole board away. <laughs> it was a, you know, it was just a flat thing. But now this is, um, you know, it's got these recessed wells and these tracks that are sort of offset. So it's, you could still, if you shook this, you might lose your place. But um, a simple bump is not going to move things out of position nearly as badly. Um, so you're you're tracking your money income, your your heat production, your plant production, your uh, discounts for different types of a lot of stuff that you are tracking in this game, and and it's good to have it in all like a nice little summary here on your board. The mechanism that we're talking about, and the reason why it feels like Race for the Galaxy, is that everybody's got a set of these cards, which will. Every round, you secretly choose one that says, this is the phase I want to happen. Um, And for doing so, you get a bonus, just like Race for the Galaxy. So you've got a development phase where you can play the green cards, but it gives you a discount. You pay three bucks less, three mega credits less. Um, There's the construction phase, phase two, which is red and blue cards. And you get to draw a card or play a second card. There is the... Action phase, so cards that you already have out in your tableau, you can trigger those actions if you choose the action phase. And of course, everybody gets to do the phases that get chosen by all of the players. So if you choose action and I choose uh, the production phase, both of those phases will happen. But only the person who chooses that phase gets the bonus. It's that same system. Um, The production, as I mentioned, production phase... That's how you get your income. In in the Big Brother game, you get your income every round. Um, but this, you have to... Somebody has to trigger production in order to get um, the, the stuff that you are trying to get. And the last thing is research, which is how you get more cards. Um, everybody gets to draw some cards and keep extras and all of that. And that's the system. Um, you continue until Mars is fully terraformed. In the multiplayer game, you're going to earn points for all of this stuff. Um, for, for putting out uh, plant tiles and, and creating an engine that's going to get you extra points for triggering certain things. It's, it's just as intricate and complex as the Big Brother game. In the solo game, you are simply trying to terraform Mars. Uh, you're given 25 turns and a dummy deck, uh, which will randomly choose a phase that triggers in addition to the one that you choose each round. Okay. Um, and in the final set of five, so you've got, you do them in clusters of five. There are five different phases. When the dummy player works their way all the way through the shuffled deck, then you reshuffle and do it again and again and again and again. And then in the last round, you get to choose the order that those other phases trigger in. That Ooh. makes 25 turns. And if you have fully terraformed Mars, flipped all the ocean tiles, raised the temperature, raised the oxygen level, then you win. And if you have not, you failed. There's also a co-op game that does something similar, um, and I think also requires you to have scored a certain amount of points. Uh, But I actually liked the solo challenge, trying to puzzle my way through all of that. Uh, and and make it all work and and the ability with those different corporations to try something different to have a different starting situation is kind of cool. So I'm excited to play more of. Uh, oh, how many? How much empty air is in it? Okay, so one weird thing before I talk about exactly what's in here. One interesting aspect that I think they planned for, but not necessarily. This is the card organizer. The boards sit on top of this. And this is currently empty space. This is the Kickstarter edition of the game, so it has the the extra cards that came with the Kickstarter edition. So there is room for expansions. But these tabs, if you'll notice, are kind of bent. And they built them that way because these tabs stick out over the cards, but the boards sit flat on top of it. So those tabs actually fold over the cards and get squashed by the boards, which is by design, but a little weird. Um, I've also found that the uh, the boards are warping just a little bit. That may be because this was airshipped immediately from the factory, um, and so it didn't have... You know, these things need to be acclimatized, and they sit in a warehouse for a while to, you know, prevent that from happening. This could be just because this got flown quickly from where it was going, or immediately after printing. So I wouldn't put too much stock in that, and it's minor, 
It just makes it spin a little bit on the table. Um, so far, so good with the Terraforming Mars card game. Ares Expedition is a lot of fun. I was uh, wanted to see if any any other questions came through. Eric uh, turned away from the mic. What did I say? Oh no! I, I you were fine. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh, it feels Coralou like it should F. be an expansion. The way they titled it, it's not. It is. It is. It's, it's at the subtitle on the bottom of the box, the Terraforming Mars card game. But I could see, I think they especially wanted to put it in a different sized box so you don't think it's the same thing. I it is. I wonder if they're referring to the fact that it's Terraforming Mars real big and then Ares and then a word that starts with EX. Because I feel like as a board gamer, when you see Terraforming Mars, Ares X, but whatever. Yes. It the Ares expansion. Looks, yeah. It almost looks like an expansion just based on the name alone. Yeah, like, whereas if it said Terraforming Mars, the card game right at the top, then it would be a little bit more, because, yeah, more clear. Um, Coralou asks, how does it, uh, how is it for storing the box vertically? I think it works fine. Um, again, those, all those cubes are in those organizers. I've bagged the other tokens, but going vertically, these cards aren't going to go anywhere. The boards are going to sit... Let me actually get it on camera. Uh, the, those cards aren't going to go anywhere, uh, and the boards sit on top. So, yeah, uh, vertically, it's fine. Um, with, it, with too many more cards, it could be a problem. I don't know about sleeving. There is enough extra space that it's probably okay. Uh, for your sleeved cards to to also get organized this way. Yeah, that's the uh, Ares expedition from Terraforming Mars. All right. Well, I'm excited that you enjoyed the solo game. I do like solo games that have like a specific goal for you to reach instead of just see how many points you can score, which like sure. some of those solo games are still fun, but I like having something more specific to strive toward in a solo game sometimes. It's interesting, though. I think sometimes when the goal is a specific point total, I'm okay with that, too. That's true. Like it's if, weird. If they, just, if they say, this is a win, like, yeah. this, um, this amount of points is considered to be a win, then yeah. But, I, I mean, we have seen games where the solo mode is literally just see how many points you can score, try and beat your previous best. And I'm, beat those, your previous score. Yeah, yeah like eventually that will become impossible and therefore not that fun. <laughs> yes. Here's, but. here's vertical as Coralou was asking and it, it doesn't, that's not really going to do much. Nice. Well, Eric, occasionally on this show, we play games with the chat that don't resonate quite as immediately. Like we play a game and then we go, eh, maybe that one, we don't bring that one back. <laughs> Okay. But I'm tenacious. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> so I am bringing back a game that you did for me in the chat uh, and it once didn't upon work? a time. And no, no, it it worked. But I think we agreed that maybe it wasn't like at our best game. And okay. I'm gonna try and make it more interesting tonight. I'm. I'm gonna okay. see what I can do. We are doing uh, press or push your luck as our theme tonight. No, yep. we're not playing press your luck. If I had a way for us to do whammies on stream, I would do it. Yeah. Instead, we are going to be playing Deal or No Deal. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Which, which I did not, I didn't tell Eric what we were doing in advance. I just told him that we were doing something. But here's the twist. You are going to get a briefcase, and so is the chat. Okay. And you are going to be the one opening briefcases from then on out. And if we learned anything the last time we played this, it's that it's probably likely that you're never going to take a deal. Now, I'm still going to offer them to you, and you can take a deal at any point you want. <laughs> uh-huh. But if we get to the end, and there are only three cases remaining, the one left on the board, your case, and the chat's case, then you all are going to have some decisions to make. Okay. So... <laughs> Um, so what I, I'm going to scooch this up a little bit. So it is actually all of, so we have a total of 25 briefcases. Right. These are, these briefcases are going to match what most people would recognize from deal or no deal with the exception that the one cent case has been removed. Yeah, so usually it is 26 cases. If I recall. Yes, correctly. that is correct. There are normally 26. Okay. Uh, I am finding where 
my, I put it over here, didn't I? Probably. I sure did. I'm going to make sure I have my, so I, I, I have a banker on call. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a website, <laughs> yep, but okay. I, I, I have the means to, to make offers for yep. you all, but I need you all to, to choose your briefcases first. And so, uh, Eric, I'm going to go ahead and let you pick first and I'm going to let the chat chat. You all decide amongst yourselves right now. I don't care how talk it out. You all pick a case. Eric, what briefcase would you like? Uh, well, my birthday is October 25th, so I'm going to go with 25. 25. Okay, so since I can't take these off because they're just sticky notes with numbers underneath them, we're just going to write Eric okay. on number 25. Also, these sticky notes are really old, and so I was originally going to have this, like, sitting up. I cannot do that because they will fall all to pieces. So that's why it's laying <laughs> down. Okay. All right, uh, chat. Can you all cooperate to give me a number is the question. This is, this is the biggest challenge. I mean, I'm yeah, I'm just saying. Okay, now we've had a couple of people say 17. That's the, that's the only number I've seen duplicated so far. Um, <laughs> Hornist said 13 six times, so clearly that counts as six votes, right? <laughs> Gator Dave said, okay, somebody make a decision. Okay, three different people have said 17. Chat, you all are getting 17. And I wasn't going to say this before you all chose, but Eric picked his birthday for his briefcase, and the chat picked mine. Oh. So that's actually really cool and interesting. Well, now, um, now you're a player, I guess. I guess, a little bit. So... Eric, now the control is going to be in your hands for a little while. Chat's not going to, I mean, chat can suggest uh, briefcases for you to open. Um, but for the most part, it's it's going to be all up to you. I'm going to go back over to this so I can actually see what the video looks like. So I can tell if that's not, there we go. That's a little bit better. All right. So, uh, Eric, you need to open a total of seven, no, yes, seven cases to start. Seven cases. Okay. I think. I think I figured this out. Well, well we're, we're, I, I did the math, but I might have. Yeah, it's okay. fine. I mean, some people are saying they've, they've lost already. You know what? I'm just going to say 13. Let's just get that one out of the way. <laughs> okay. So uh, dramatic pause. I don't know. Blah, 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 blah. Let's see what's in case number 13. $200 is I now see. off the board okay. so that would have been that would have been a good briefcase yeah if chat if chat had taken it but alas what else are we going for uh let's say seven number seven da, 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 five thousand dollars okay. okay so that's that's yeah. a little bit better we could do that uh let's say 16 16. All right, right next to the one the chat picked. Da, 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 da. This one's actually a little bit stuck. 25,000. All right. Okay. Oof. We're all we're all on the right-hand side of, of the big numbers right now. We got to go back over to the left side. We want to see some two and three-digit numbers, Eric. <laughs> Hornist is saying, "I have faith now." Um <laughs> Let's see. I will Chat says to pick no, I'm, 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 uh, yeah, I'm gonna pick six. Let's break. Let's put six on there. Number six. All right. Let's see what we got behind number six. <gasps> oh. Oh, that's five hundred thousand, Eric. Chat did oh. it. They suggested it's... it. Chat, chat. Hannah and said for six. For the record, these numbers were written down randomly using a random number generator. I did not choose where the amounts went. So in okay. case anybody wants to try and meta this, <laughs> I used a random number generator. So. Okay. Uh, all right. So how many more do I need to pull? I need to pull... Three more. Three more. Let's mm -hmm. say... Two. Number two. da 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 Four hundred dollars. That's All right. more like it. That's that's what we want. Um, What's especially fun about this is I don't remember where the, the amounts are, so it's good. fun. It's a surprise for me as well. <laughs> uh, let's say fourteen. I never liked fourteen. Ah, yeah. Who likes fourteen, especially when it only has twenty-five dollars oh, behind okay. it? That would have been really bad if it was a big amount, but I was. <laughs> 
<laughs> hoping based on statistics alone that we were okay. So All right, one more. One more one has more. to go. Coralou says number one. I'm going to pick number one. Okay, number one it is. Da -da 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 -da. Ten dollars! Well done! Okay, and then we're going to be opening... How many cases next? Let's see. I think we're going to open five cases next. So let's let's see what the banker has to offer yeah, me right. right now. Okay. Right now, current fair offer. I have no idea. There's a lot. This 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 online calculator is giving me a lot of options. So apparently, I get to make some decisions oh. here. Oh. I don't Peter know what Dave they, yeah. says. The offer from the bank is a ham sandwich and a fresca. I mean, I would not take that deal, but that's, you know, somebody might really like Fresca. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I am going to say that the banker is offering you, I forgot, I have a prop for this too. Oh. I almost forgot. <laughs> is it the dream phone? The <laughs> dream phone? No, that would be amazing. I wish I had that. All right. The banker is willing to offer you $82,133. Wow. I mean, that's a that's a generous offer right there. I mean, I would say so. $82,000. That's that's a lot more than a whole bunch of the numbers that are left on the board. That is a lot more than a whole bunch of the numbers. But golly, gosh, golly. I, I'm going to say no deal. No deal. All right. See, this is where this game, we knew it went wrong last time. And so I've prepared. I'm prepared for this. All right, so we are going to open five more cases, Eric. Let me know which ones you want to open. Uh, well, let's say 23. 23. Da -da 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 -da. Woo! Five dollars! All right. Yeah, always pick the other case, says Jeff Engelstein. Yes, th I, I'm well aware of that. I'm ready for this. Um, let's say eight. Eight. All right. Da, 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 da. 75 bucks. All right. You're on a roll. Woo. 19. 19. $1,000. Okay. Okay. I can live with that. Um... Gator Dave says he would have taken the 82000 and walked away. But man, well, when you've got a million dollars staring you in the face, that's hard to do. But Gator Dave is, is... So that's where Gator Dave has locked in. This is how chat can can win. If, there you if, go, yeah. If we <laughs> fail and get less than the eighty two k, then Gator Dave wins. <laughs> there you go. I say five. Let's pull five. Oh, <laughs> Jerry says leave 24 for last because you can't see it behind my avatar anyway. <laughs> Nice. Okay, five. Ten thousand. Uh, all right. I mean, uh, it's on the low end of the higher yep. numbers, so I think that's fine. It's go. less can... than our previous offer was, so that's got to be good. We can uh, make make Crystal's screen bigger, just for Jerry. Uh, so how <laughs> many more do I need to do? I need one more. One more, I believe. Yeah. Uh that twenty-one staring at me. I'm gonna pick twenty-one. 21. All right. Da, 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 da. 100. Okay. That was a great round. Very nice. That was a super great round. Boy, okay. Oh boy, I should and... just take this deal and go. All right. We're going to be opening four cases after this. Are we picking numbers to make a fun pattern on the board? Maybe I am. Yeah. Who knows? All right. Well, the, the banker has come back with a really good offer for you, Eric. We could just end the game right we now. We could. Oh, boy. Uh, in theory. So the banker wants me to tell you in, yep. in my very official scratch pad capacity that he would like to offer you $122,000, $122,515. You know, frankly, I'm a little disappointed in that offer. I was hoping it was going to jump up more than that. Well, the banker is a stingy fellow. <laughs> uh, you know, I I mean, he that's He doesn't a, believe in you, Eric. Why doesn't he believe in you? That's a life-changing amount of money right there, but I'm just going to let it go. No deal. No deal. <laughs> we're, we're powering on. All right. Let me go back over to my thing real quick. Perfect. And the, the Mr. E said to take the deal. So Mr. E has locked in at 122,000. 
Okay. And Gator Dave is still happy with his 82, apparently. So, um... The real dilemma is you came into the show with zero, so anything you take away is gain. <laughs> we haven't seen the dollar case yet, though, so, I mean... We have not have seen the dollar. dollar. We haven't seen the 50... Um, we're missing, yeah. We, we've already knocked out a bunch of the other low ones, though. Okay. Uh, well, so, how many cases are we pulling now? Um, we are pulling a total of four cases now. Eleven. Out. Eleven. Do, 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 do. 750. Very okay. nice. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to choose the 15. 15. Okay. 300. Eric, look at you on a roll. Oh, boy. Uh, 24 just for Jerry. 24 for Jerry. 500 bucks. Oh, boy. One more. Oh, my gosh. This is amazing. I know you all can't see, but like they're all, of the the left side, which is all the low numbers, and the right side, which is the big numbers. You only have three numbers left on the low side, and you still have seven on the big side. All of seven of those are fifty thousand or higher. Oh boy! So you are doing spectacular right Don't now. Don't jinx it. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to choose nine for my last one. All right. Dun, 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 dun. A hundred thousand. That's okay. That's okay. 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 That's fine. That's fine. We it's not a million. That. All right. So let's see. We're going to be opening. I need to leave one left. <laughs> Clearing a path around the board for Pac-Man. Yes. That, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Something like that. All right. We will do. We'll do four cases again next time. So let me see what my what the banker is going to offer you. Ooh, the, well, the banker's offer did jump up. Oh, good. It did. Good. So the banker is offering you. I don't know. People who took 82000 might not be as happy to see that they now could have $227,480. See, that's kind of tempting. This, I, I mean, I would not blame you if you were just like, yeah, almost a quarter of a million. I'm, I'm in. Give it to me. I mean, like, so wait, let just talking this out. The only things, the only cases bigger than that right now are what a three hundred thousand, a four hundred thousand, a seven fifty, and the million, and a one million. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You've got boy. four cases that are higher, five cases that are lower. It's it's pretty much smack dab in the middle. I mean. Oh, Nobody would boy. fault you for taking the deal. I know, but I I want to know what happens when we get to the end. I know. This is the, this is the thing. Because <laughs> it's not real money, so it's hard to... <laughs> I... Oh, boy. So if I say... If I say yes, then we have to see what chat... Whether chat made the right decision. And chat I has will, to start making decisions. I'll let chat open doors. If you take this deal, I will start reading... I will start reading numbers in the chat, and chat can soldier on if they want. How about that? I'm going to take that deal. Okay, Eric's taking the I'm deal. I'm going to so lock Eric's, in that 227. Eric's walking away with 227, 480. Uh, Eric, I might bring you back in sure. in a little bit. We'll, we'll see if what chat does, but I believe I might have a way, I might have to modify my ending a little bit, but I think we can make it happen. So, <laughs> chat. I am going to, <laughs> Mr. E says, wait, not real money? <laughs> Mr. E, if I had a million dollars to give away. <laughs> this is not what we'd be doing right now. I mean, no, that, I was going to say that, but it's not true. I would still be doing this show yeah. with you if I had a million dollars. It's true. So, like, I can't say that I would This would be, be a far that. more popular show if we had a million dollars to give away. Oh, that's also true. Okay. So I'm just, y'all chat, it's up to you. Um, okay, so 20, Coralou says 22, clear clear that floor. All right, so 22, ooh, 75,000 is now gone. Marking that one off, that's, that's the next. That's still less than the offer was though. That's the next wrong one, there we go. Okay, Mr. E picks 20. Oh! oh! Oh, no. what a bummer. The million is off the board. 
He even said it in the chat twice. He was really adamant that he wanted me to pull 20. Uh, All right, well, well, we're gonna we're gonna keep soldiering on. So after that, Jerry said 18. Eh, that's 50 bucks. Okay, that's, that's a good, good one. That's good. All right. And then after that, Chicago Twilight said 10. We'll pull 10. 50K. All not right. horrible. Was that four? Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. And then we'll say that we'll pull two next. So what would the offer be at this point? We're going to pull two cases next. Calculate. Hmm. The offer only went up a little bit, chat. So it I will. still went uh, up, though, even with the million go gone. Yeah, even with the million gone, the offer did go up. I think the banker is scared of chat. <laughs> so Hannah's asking, so we can't open Eric's? Uh, I will, I will get to Eric and your all's case in a minute. Okay. Um, We're going to sort of pretend that this is what happened if I could have stayed in. I, I, I have an idea. I mean, okay. again, this is a fake game that we've made up. So, sure. you know. Uh, the banker did increase his offer, surprisingly. It's now $242,183. So, chat. Uh, any numbers you're typing in right now, I'm going to ignore, just as an <laughs> FYI. <laughs> because it'll be too hard for me to scroll back up and keep track of things. So, yep. right now, chat, you tell me, do you want to take the deal or no? no? Deal or no deal? That's the name of the show, apparently. <laughs> there you go. Th thanks, Eric. Yeah. <laughs> so chat needs to say deal or no deal. I will risk it, biscuit. I don't. I, I think that's no deal. <laughs> yeah, I think Coralie's gonna risk it for that biscuit. Is what yes. <laughs> that was. All right, no deal. Everybody's saying no deal. We knew that was coming. Yeah, of course. To, I had to let y'all pick, right? Okay, the numbers that are left. That's a good question, Jerry. I will let you know that the numbers left on the board are oh, one dollar. We, we got a deal. Bettina says oh. deal. Well, you all can pretend Ray that you says got... deal. Mr. Coaster says deal. There's some more deals. Y'all are no fun. <laughs> <laughs> Stop taking a deal for well, fake money. <laughs> you know what it is? They if they if they lock in, they beat me. Oh. That's what it means. This Well, is... not necessarily because like I said, I have a twist for the end of this game. Oh golly. I'm, I, I don't know how well it's going to work, but I'm going to say, those of you who took the deal, congratulations, you got 242K. <laughs> Anybody who wants to keep soldiering on, that's what we're doing. There you the go. numbers remaining on the board are $1, $200, $300,000, $400,000, and $750,000. That's actually really good. Those this are big numbers great, still in yeah, there. Yeah, this is a great board honestly uh i mean the odds of either you or the chat having something pretty awesome are are great yep. we don't know who yep. what i'm glad i don't remember where things are because i feel like i would give stuff away but i honestly have no idea where anything is so all right chat uh at this point you can type in numbers we're going to open two more doors and then we're going to leave one case that nobody picked chat's case and eric's case at the end um, will our fake money be direct deposited? Yes. yes. Yes, it will. And it's not taxable <laughs> as well. So enjoy that. <laughs> um, yes, but yeah, if I see numbers in the chat now, I'm going to open, I'm opening two doors. So the first two numbers that I see in the chat are what I'm going to open. Chat was behaving very nicely and not putting numbers in the chat like I asked a minute ago. Yeah, and now I... The delay. Okay, we got them. 12 and 4. So 12 is getting opened first. $200. Okay. Oh, Yo. boy. Now, 4, now that we've locked 4 in, that came yeah. up very early when we were first choosing cases. Somebody said 4 is where the money is, and that was going to be my backup case. I was hoping that was going to oh. be the third case left over. So if there's money behind 4... Okay. Then whoever said that was right the whole time. Y'all don't put numbers in the chat multiple times, please. It spams the chat and it makes it harder for us to follow stuff. Um, all right. So number four. 300,000. That's still, so, there's still a 400 and a 750 in the game. 
That's true. Also a one dollar case. <laughs> I could not have made this more interesting if I tried. So I'm going to have to figure out how we do this exactly. It's going to be a little bit different than I originally planned, but we are going to enter into a modified prisoner's dilemma situation. Okay. So Eric, for you, I'm going to give you a couple of different options here. I will say that you can keep the money you walked away with. If you'd so choose, you will not say this out loud. You will just, make a decision and I'll, I'll give chat some options in a second too. So you will keep what you walked away with and it can't be taken from you. You will, maybe I just do two options. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm trying to make it too complicated. I think you will either keep what you took or you will split what is in all three or no, the two, you will split what's in your and chat's cases with chat no <laughs> math <laughs> dang it i'll figure out the way to fix this <laughs> i think maybe we just find out what's in the cases okay i wanted to like make the chat try and steal money from you and get bamboozled oh but i see i you know like because i figure if it if maybe like because we know what the total of all three cases is so that's not an unknown quantity at this point but all right, let's see. Let's see what chat picked. So chat, actually, let me give chat one option. Chat, do you want to keep flip. your case? Chat, yeah. do you want to keep your case or do you want to go to case number three? That is your option. Uh, I can actually make a poll for that. Because uh, because I know chat is probably going to switch because they paid they paid attention to Jeff. I mean, I would say that that's possible. So what I'm going to do is put this into the chat for you all to vote on what you want to do. Oh, Jerry liked my thing. It wasn't, sorry, Jerry, I didn't have it completely thought out <laughs> the way that I intended. I had something, but it, um, so if you all click, oh, I'm not a mod in anymore, so I don't know if that link even showed up. Uh, Probably. I don't, I didn't see it. Yeah, no, I'm not. Well, I'm not a mod on the channel anymore. Hmm. That's weird. Uh, I will message it to you in Skype so you can put it in. Okay. Uh, uh, I actually might not be able to do that either. Ha! <laughs> All right. Well, then I'm just going to read what chat's saying. How about that? <laughs> there you go. Uh, ever, so swap, change it, three, three, switch, switch, swap. Okay, almost everybody wants to swap. Yep. So we are going to swap. So now we're going to look at what was in chat's case first. Yep. So nobody got this. 750. $750,000. Oh no, chat. I think I've got the dollar. I think I've got the dollar. <laughs> All right. So now, so chat, chat is walking away with, with whatever's in case number three. But let's say, Eric, I'm going to give you an option now. <laughs> we, you, you gave up your case. Yep. So you can keep what you had taken as your deal, or you can switch to case number three as well. And you can take home the same, whatever's in case number three, chat's taking it home. You can take home the same amount as chat. I'm sticking with my deal. Okay. I think that's smart. So let's see what was in your original case. Yep. Oh! 4,000, which means chat's taking it home with the dollar. <laughs> Dang it, Jeff. Oh my gosh, this game took so much longer. I'm so sorry. I just looked at what time it is. <laughs> we haven't talked about anything yet. I'm so sorry, but oh, that was fun. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, I'm going to switch back over to just me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so really quickly, here are some push your luck games. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, okay, so. Oh no, it's, I've got the blur on. Can't see because of the blur. <laughs> No, we should we should definitely talk about a few. Uh, so, Thank so you, to you, Matt, for humoring me as we tried a game that didn't work in the past, but I thought would be more fun a second time, and I think I was right. So, um, what to you is a press your luck game? What does that, that mean? That's an interesting question. 
for a reason that I think you might bring up as soon as I say this, because uh, okay. Board Game Geek has some games listed under the Press Your Luck mechanism that surprised me. In my mind, a Press Your Luck game or a game that has Push Your Luck as a, me- a key mechanism involves you having to make a decision where going forward could cause you to gain more of a thing or lose everything that you've acquired, yes. generally. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the the um the the potential loss and and usually a catastrophic loss is important for that push your luck. Um, there are plenty of games where yeah I could maybe get a little bit more, um, but if that doesn't work out, it's not nearly as big a deal. Um, but but we're talking about uh, one of the ones I just showed off, Quacks of Quedlinburg. If you push it too much, your potion explodes and you don't get anything, or you do get something, but you get far less that turn. You're out of the you running get, yeah, for something. Yeah, you get half of what you would have right. gotten otherwise, basically. Um, and and so it is a it's a big deal to to explode your your potion, um, or can't stop, um, where you will lose all of your progress during the course of that turn, and that can be if you do that too much, you're not going to you're, well, you're obviously not going to win. Um, you you need to you need to stop and lock in your progress before you have gone too far. Absolutely. Uh, there are some things that I guess um, I, I I've mentioned some pusher luck um, co-op games. There you've got the pandemic dice game, uh, pandemic the oh Cure, yeah, where you can continue to roll your dice. But one of the symbols on the dice is basically a lock and prevents you from making any more progress. So it's not quite the catastrophic end. It, you don't, like, lose your turn. But if you roll, it, it could be the thing that pushes you over the edge to cause an epidemic um, or an explosion or something really nasty. Um, and, and you are often giving up a symbol that could be useful maybe not as useful and isn't the thing you really want, and taking the risk that you will get the terrible symbol, hoping that you get the one that is far more useful to you. So I think that applies as well, even though it's not quite the, like, lose your whole turn concept of of can't stop. Absolutely. Um, Can't stop is really fun, too, because it's... It's different from a lot of push your luck games in that it can theoretically be won on the very first turn. Like that's not common in most games, let alone push your luck games. And I think it leads to one of the things that I like most about push your luck games. And that is those big emotional dramatic moments. Like I think a lot of board games elicit, you know, like maybe general happiness, like, oh, that was an enjoyable experience, but push your luck games go through the spectrum as far as emotions go. Like yeah. just epic moments, you you know, to the point where your friend is about to beat you and you're cheering them on just because it's such an epic run that they're going on. Like, it's just so much fun to watch that moment happen. And simultaneously on the other side, push your luck games can also be really devastating. Like they're like Quacks of Quedlinburg is a great example. I love Quacks of Quedlinburg, but if you draw poorly every round, even with the catch up mechanism, it can be kind of a bummer sometimes. Like in any push your luck game where you just continue to get bad luck. Yeah. Like, oh, we. Crystal froze for a second. She'll be back. There she's here. It's, oh, she's I'm here. I don't uh, know what happened. Uh, yes, and and if that happens to you too many times in Quacks, it just doesn't it doesn't work. You can't catch up to someone who has been able to stop and has maybe gotten lucky a couple times pushing that one extra draw. Um, it it is difficult to catch up if you have a game where you're just you're exploding all the time. Right. Um. Uh, a push your luck game that I really enjoy that I think doesn't get talked about enough is fire in the library um, where you are rescuing books from a burning library and you're drawing cubes out of a bag and those cubes represent the books that you're rescuing, but there is fire in that bag as well. And so sometimes you pull out the fire cubes. Um, and this one is really interesting just because like the theme is so 
I mean, it's still, you're pulling cubes out of a bag, but it feels more thematic than a lot of other push your luck games. Obviously can't stop. It's just pure dice rolling or whatever else. Um, even Quacks of Quedlinburg, I don't really necessarily feel like I'm brewing a potion, but Fire in the Library, I kind of feel the theme a little bit more than I do in some other Push Your Luck games. Mm. Uh, a slight difference on the, the Push Your Luck system is uh, Canizia's Escape, um, which is another dice rolling game, and you'll get combinations of two dice uh, that are you know ranked. You might get a, a 52 or a 75 on, on these two dice. That's, there are sevens and sixes on some of the dice. And then you decide where on this grid you're going to put them, on this ladder, basically. And the danger is, uh, you know, the higher you put it on the ladder, the more points it will be worth if it's still there when it gets to your turn again. But the higher you put it, the more in danger it is of being knocked off by a higher total. So I could put a really nice, I could put a 52 on the one or two point slot and be relatively certain I'm going to get one or two points when it comes back around to me. But, uh, and because there's fewer places to go beneath me, in order to knock somebody off, you have to put your dice in a lower spot, take fewer points, but knock off the person that's uh, above you. Um, so it's less likely that someone's going to do that and going for only one point or zero points. But if I choose the four or the five, someone's going to knock me off. And it's taking a much bigger risk for bigger points. Um, a slightly different, it's much more of a choice how much risk you want to take uh, in Escape. Um, what's really funny is I feel like at this point in our tenure of this show, we've kind of developed a simpatico with the chat because two different points that were on my list of things that I wanted to bring up have kind of been brought up in the chat thus far. Yep. Um, so Daniel mentions that simple push your luck games are fun to play with children. And I actually think push your luck games are neat to play with kids because it levels the playing field to some degree. Um, you know, a lot of hobby gamers like to say, oh, we don't want games with too much luck in them. But there are some heavy luck games like Push Your Luck games that can be really fun. And yeah, when the adults have just as much of a chance to lose everything as the kiddos, I think that that can be really fun and it makes it, you know, makes a win more attainable for a kid. Um, the other thing that um, it was mentioned in the chat, Jerry said Clank has a Push Your Luck aspect, doesn't it? And I was actually going to ask Eric if you think games like Clank and Deep Sea Adventure would be considered Push Your Luck because... In both of those games, you are traveling, for all intents and purposes, down a path or down into a dungeon. And yep. the farther you go, the harder it will be for you to get back with anything. So it does feel push your luck, but not as yeah, like distilled as some of the other ones. It's, it's a little more, I mean, it, it sort of blends into risk versus reward. Yeah. Um, which I think is a, a little bit of a wider topic like merchant of venus is a risk versus reward game you you take the long path or you take the dangerous short path and i wouldn't necessarily call that a press your luck game i okay. think you need to have much more of that distilled you know stay in or back out um and and i guess clank does do that it's more of the overarching theme of the whole thing i think you need to have more of that discreet individual turn you know, stay in or move out. Ink and gold is a pressure yeah. luck game. Do you stay in or, or leave? Like um, you make a, a yeah, because in Clank, you can him and haw throughout the course of the game. You could go down a little, go up a little. Do, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Whereas in ink and gold, you're in or you're out. And that's yeah. it. <laughs> I think the, the simple decisions uh, sort of are a hallmark of a, of a pressure luck game. I'm, I'm thinking of, I mentioned this before we started, uh, this old 1950s game that my family loved to play called Skunk. It's just played with two dice. Uh, the one on the die is replaced with a skunk figure. And you just roll the dice. And as long as you don't roll a skunk, you can keep rolling and adding to your total, adding to your total, adding to your total. But as soon as you get a skunk, you are out for that round and you've lost all of your progress for that turn. Or you can bank it and write it down and you're racing to 100 points. Um, but if you get two skunks, you zero your score. You've lost everything and you start at zero again. Wow. Um, but it is all very much go, you're in or you're out. Roll or don't. And very quick, very simple. Um, just a, a, a lot of discrete decisions. Same with can't stop. Do you roll again or do you back out? Do you roll again or do you back out? 
Which numbers do you take? All right, now what? Um, as opposed to Clank, which is more of a, it's a, it's a broader decision tree, I think. Yeah, and those games were listed on BGG as being push your luck games. There were also a bunch of other games that had push your luck listed as a mechanism that I didn't, I couldn't suss out why. Um, do you know what's a really awesome push your luck game that I originally thought was not going to be good at all? Push, the card game. Have you played Push? I don't think I have. So I got it for free at BGG Con back in whatever year I went to BGG Con, which who knows what years are at this point, probably 2018. And it kind of looks like Uno, like the, the art style and like the, it's a small tuck box. And it, it like it kind of resembles like an Uno style card game. So when I picked it up off the pile, I was like, oh, this is probably garbage, whatever. It is super fun. So in Push, there's cards of different colors with different numbers on them. And on your turn, you draw from the deck and you can form up to three piles of cards. The cards in any given pile cannot match in number or color. So if you draw a card that's the same color or number as another card you've already drawn, you can't put it in the same pile as that card. Um, and if you ever draw a card that you can't place into any of your three piles, then those three piles get distributed to the other players. If you decide to stop, <laughs> you get to pick your choice of one of the three piles, and then the other two do go to other players. It's fascinating and super fun. Like, huh. it's one of those games that just, like, you're like, wait, this looks like a mass market game, but it has so much interesting strategy to it. Uh, and it was free. I got it at BGG Con. I love it. I brought it out as, well, pre, you know, pandemic, um, as like a quick filler when we're waiting for people to show up at game night or whatever else. And it's got a small footprint since it's just cards. Jerry brings up Mystic Veil, which has a pressure luck aspect, uh, very similar to the uh, the decisions in um, Quacks. Uh, you've got your your deck and you are trying to, I forget what the symbols are that you're trying to avoid. You you basically pull cards until you've got, what, three of these symbols? And then you can decide to keep going because the fourth one is going to bust you. Um, and, and that gets, those are interesting decisions because you might know that you have a very strong card still in that deck that you have not seen yet. Um, I did find that the physical game of Mystic Veil vale almost makes it almost gives you too much information when you're doing that decision because the physical cards if you have one where you've stacked it with a bunch of overlays now you've got a card that's this thick in its its um uh blah, blah, blah. what what's it called sleeve in its sleeve is now thicker than the other cards and so you can actually almost see what your chance is of having a good card versus one that's going to bust you which I found yeah. a little annoying. Um, but anyway, that, that certainly applies uh, as far as a push your luck game. Um, another push your luck game that I actually didn't grab off my shelf, but I really love is Welcome to the Dungeon and its sequel, Welcome Back to the Dungeon, which I have combined into a single box. Um, that one is very much a clear, you either stay in or you're out, you have to pass. Um, and if you stay in, you draw cards from a deck and they you're basically either removing equipment from the, the hero that's going into the dungeon or putting monsters into the dungeon. So you'll have information about what you'll have to traverse if you stay in to the end, um, but it gets hairy fast. And I really enjoy that one, especially because all the different characters have different equipment and do different things. Yeah. Uh, King of Tokyo. Uh, I know I put it on a uh, push your luck list. More in the decision of whether you stay in Tokyo. There's definitely that. Um, and it does have the possible catastrophic consequences, because if you stay too long, you can get killed. You know, you, you could be out of the game. So, um, yeah, that is definitely a, when it gets round to your turn again, do you stay or go? Mm -hmm. um, or when someone attacks you, do you yield or do you stay put? Right. Um, a couple other games that I just wrote down on my list that I enjoy that um, are push your luck. Uh, Celestia is really fun. Um, yep. Zombie Dice was is kind of a classic, yep. you know, more mass market game. But when I first got into the hobby, that was a fun one to take around with me. And I still own it. Um, yep. And Qu Quartz is another one that I really enjoy. Yes, my kids love Quartz. Um, it's it, it's one of those games that I feel like I shouldn't like as much as I do. I don't quite know what it, like, because it's not that 
complex or super interesting, but it's yeah. just fun. I almost feel like the fail condition is too easy to get in courts. It's it's it, that two of those obsidians. Yes. And that can happen in like your first draw in the game. It's like, well, okay, I didn't even get to do anything. Um, yeah. which happens to me too often in that game to make me happy. <laughs> that has definitely happened to either me or my friends when we've played it before, so I yeah. feel that for sure. Uh, Coralu asks if there are any co-op Press Your Luck games. I talked about uh, the Experimental Meds or, or uh, Pandemic the Cure. Um, I don't know how many others. I'm sure there are other Press Your Luck aspects um, in co-op games, you know, how far do we push this? Do we go for another action? Do we spend actions? I can I can see that, like, in, in regular Pandemic. Do we try and spend a few actions to eradicate a disease and make it significantly easier for us for the rest of the game, but I am ignoring this other thing, and that could destroy us? Um, I, want, I think the reason there probably aren't a lot of pure Press Your Luck games that are cooperative is because it's not just about the massive success or the detrimental failure, it's the competition with the other people doing the same thing. I think that really makes those games super interesting because if you're not competing against somebody else, honestly, kind of like the our uh, game tonight of Deal or No Deal, if there are no real stakes, like why wouldn't you just keep pressing? And if it's a co-op game, it feels like if you're going to win or lose together, well, let's go for the win, right? Right. Like, I, I'm thinking suddenly um, Robinson Crusoe has a press your luck aspect uh, okay. in that you've got your two action tokens and you can spend both of those actions. You spend all day doing something and you succeed automatically. You don't roll any dice. You have done the thing that you were supposed to do, but you're not going to be very efficient that way. So you almost need to split your attention more often than not. And that's when you take the risk that you may fail, you may succeed and get injured, you may lose resources, you you know, bad stuff can happen. But you need to do that a little bit, or you're never going to get enough done to win the scenario. Um, That's true. So there's another co-op press your luck game. Okay, yeah. Well, uh, did you have any other games on your list that you wanted to mention, Eric? I think we've covered a lot. Um, yeah, we have. And I, I loved when you proposed this theme for tonight, the press your luck of the Irish. Like, I thought that was a fun. Such a dumb idea. But we, <laughs> this, was, this was weeks ago when we had this text conversation. We're like, okay, we're done. No more planning. We're all set. Yep. Um, well, chat, if there's any press your luck games that you all love that we didn't mention, feel free to drop them in the chat. Otherwise, we've, well, I'll say we'll give us a, like just a few minutes yeah. um, until we wrap things up. So if you all have any other questions for Eric or myself, uh, please feel free to drop those in the chat because otherwise we're just going to sit here and stare at you and that's not that much fun. So Daniel asks, can you stop? Sometimes. <laughs> Uh, we're actually, I mentioned the uh, Board Game Arena uh, group uh, for the Dice Tower, and we are doing a Can't Stop tournament right now. And it is oh, nice. interesting, uh, being a Dice Tower related group, that there's a bunch of people saying, I'm doing the Tom Vassell strategy, I'm not stopping. Oh, and um, it's been fun to, uh, to, to have the back and forth. We're only about one round in so far, so there's still a lot of game to play. Okay. Eric, is that eight on the forehead of your dice guy like Harry Potter's lightning bolt? I've actually wondered that. Uh, it's, it's really just that it's a D8 and that's like a sh the shaded numbers. I don't think that, I don't think Tina puts the numbers on the dice people anymore. The, um, you know, my, the version that's on the screen right now is an older version of the dice person. And I think Crystal's is a newer mm -hmm dice character uh, this is the original one for me as well okay although it came later but yeah you can see a number on the side of mine Do you, you can see a eyeball? six yeah I can't. there's too. a six on the side yep um but, but yeah I don't, I, have, I don't think the new ones have numbers on them i don't think they do either i have a newer version of my dice guy as well like this this one is the older one but it's the best one because it has the dice puppers <laughs> yes indeed i love the <laughs> dice puppers <laughs> Dice Guy Eric is in the Cult of Eight. Okay, yes. Uh, Coralou says, if Crystal has the little treasure boxes from Diamant, uh, they might be useful to use instead of suitcases for the next time we play Deal or No Deal. I do not own uh, either Ink and Gold or Diamant. Diamant. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, um, I actually love that game, and I've played it on Board Game Arena 
a ton. Um, I've played physical versions as well. Like a couple people in my game group owned it. And so it was one of those games that I just never felt like I needed to buy. Um, but I've always been, I've always wanted to try Diamond with, with the, the little treasure chests because it's slightly different mechanically, right? Like there's a something that's different. Uh, I think it's almost identical. Okay. I, I don't think I think it's it's production issues. You know, some use folded cards for tents, yeah. and some have boxes, and it's all was, it's more production. So tell me if this is accurate. At some point, somebody told me that one of the versions of one of the games you would ho like pretend to hold something in your hand instead of like so was it in, instead of choosing a card whether you stay or go did you put something in your hand and reveal or not? Is that maybe? A thing? That could I don't be. know. I don't, I'm not. I'm not sure. I haven't played both versions. I've only played Ink and Gold. Okay. Uh, update on the game shelves. Not much going on there. Ikea is nationwide out of the, the best of shelves that I'm trying to get. Um, I've heard early June, late May. Um, so that has stalled. We've actually started a project where I got a, like a 13 drawer apothecary style cabinet, um, for Ooh. accessories. And we are going to paint it a nice plum color. Uh, it's got some card catalog style hardware. So I'm going to put little labels like small bags, medium bags, large bags. Um, Hugo's amazing tape going in there. All the accessories, cubes, dice. Um, I got a wine rack for storing uh, play mats and uh, the Board oh, Game Geek silicone smart. things. Um, and it's, it's the wine rack is actually hexes. So it sort of, it applies. Um, That's cool. So I'm excited about that. Uh, that is our project for the next few weeks or so, uh, painting that. I sanded it because um, we didn't like the finish that we got, so we're going to paint that. Um, so I, I've got some things to, uh, and I think we're going to install lights as well in the next few weeks. Oh, very so I've, cool. I've got things to occupy me in the game room while I'm waiting for Ikea to get its act together. Okay. Um, Joe asks if either of us are going to the Dice Tower to retreat. He knows that traveling out of state is tough, but maybe in September. Um, Eric, you typically do go to the retreat. I um, am, as far as I know, I, I don't know if I've gotten a full confirmation from Tom and the gang, but I, I believe I am on, on the docket, um, and I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that, that we'll all be fully vaccinated by then and, and able to travel. So I'm, I'm hoping to be part of the retreat. Uh, I've never been to the retreat. Um, Tom did invite me in past years, um, but generally in a normal year where I was doing a lot of travel for board game cons and other stuff, the retreat was something that I couldn't usually swing time-wise just because the, the travel from Vegas to Florida adds an extra two days practically. Mm -hmm. um, so I, and I don't know for sure if I'll be invited this year. So if you all would like me to be at the retreat, let Tom know, uh, you know, yes. he, he, he would need to know if he, if you all want me to be there. So. Yep. Uh, Coral um, asks if uh, Arch Rabbles ever showed up. Yes, I do have it. And I keep trying to get my wife to play it. I want to get a, an actual knitter's perspective on Arch Rabbles uh, to see how realistic it is. Um, because one of the goals is to get rid of your stash of yarn. And she looked at it and said, that is not realistic. <laughs> so we will see. All right. One last question. Coralou or no Kabuki kid says, what's the most recent thing you both have backed? Um, my only current active Kickstarter, meaning it hasn't ended yet is gift of tulips from weird giraffe games. Hmm. I love weird giraffe games. They have a lot of cool stuff. I own, uh, actually, Fire in the Library, which I mentioned earlier, is from them. Ah, so, yes. Uh, but yeah, Gift of Tulips looks really neat. Uh, I'm very excited about it. That's cool. Um, when I I recently backed a project from Mike Selinker um, and, uh, and his company, Lone Shark Games, it is a crossword-themed graphic novel. Um, that's read from both sides. So it's it's one of those books that you can flip over and start from the other side. And it's okay. two characters who are crossword enthusiasts, uh, and it has solvable crosswords in the book. Um, and it actually sort of deals with issues of, of how clues are constructed and making clues more um, inclusive and... Um, and thoughtful, uh, and, and actual issues that are debates in the crossword puzzle world that are 
exemplified by these characters in this story. And I was like, that that is quirky and different, and it doesn't exist anywhere else. So I, I backed a copy of that book, and I'm, I'm excited to see that happen. Very cool. All right. Well, chat, thank you so much for uh, hanging out with us this evening. Uh, we've had a lot of fun. I hope you all enjoyed the deal or no deal game. I knew I was taking a risk by bringing back a game that didn't work <laughs> as well as some of our past ones, but it was a press your luck episode. I had to do something, right? Like sure. the, the other thing I considered was trying to make you, me and the chat play liar's dice. And I could not figure out how to do that one logistically. Interesting. So. Yeah. Which honestly, that's a press your luck game too. And we did, I didn't even mention it, even though I was planning on, cause you're upping the stakes. It is. Huh. Yeah. In a bluffing, I guess bluffing is bluffing. generally a pressing your luck sort of thing too. Yeah. Um, before you all leave this evening, if you could do me one quick favor and hit the thumbs up button below the video, if you did enjoy tonight's episode, we really appreciate it. And the YouTube algorithms eat that stuff up and they will then spit this video out to all your friends we love and they'll spitting. make sure that. I mean, really, it's great, especially in a pandemic. <laughs> and it will make sure that you see our episodes pop up in your feed in the future, too. Um, we will be back in two weeks, which, thank God, that's still March. It's because still it was, March, just barely. It's just barely. <laughs> like, I, uh, we're, we're, I'm beating a dead horse when I talk about how time is passing. But March 31st, which is a Wednesday, at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, will be our next episode. Um, uh, Eric, any closing thoughts from you? Oh, boy. Um, I don't have my taxes done yet. I just found out that uh, I get an extension. They, they moved it to May 15th, which is great. Oh. Yeah. Well, I am currently working on mine as well. I am having a CPA assist me because buying a house and getting divorced make things complicated. <laughs> so. I'm not looking, and that's one of the reasons why I'm hesitating. I've, I'm not looking forward to doing the paperwork on buying the house either. So yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, uh, so hopefully everybody else is having good luck getting their taxes done. We'll see you in two weeks. Until then, I'm Crystal Dax. I'm Eric Summer. And you've been watching Dice Tower tonight. Thank you for watching. Promotional consideration has been provided by game publishers in the form of review copies of games. Crystal and I will see you in two weeks for another installment. Our show is supported by viewers like you. Thank you. Dice Tower Tonight is produced by Crystal and me with assistance from Tom Vassell, Mike Delisio, Roy Kennedy, Chris Yee, and Rob Searing. That part of the aluminum beverage receptacle that has the pull tab on it brought to you by Cans Top. Timothy Pinkham composed our theme, and hosting is provided by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games at great prices at CoolStuffInc.com. Give us your feedback on the Dice Tower Guild at Board Game Geek on Facebook or Twitter, or by emailing us at crystal at dicetower.com or eric at dicetower.com. And don't forget to visit the other shows in the Dice Tower Network. Find something new at dicetowernetwork.com. Until next time, from all of us at the Dice Tower, have fun, have fun gaming! gaming. I don't know why the worst puns are the ones that make me laugh the most. You know how hard it is to, to talk while I can see you laughing? I know, it's really hard and it makes me really happy. Oh boy, good night right. everybody. Bye everybody. Bye.